want Rudy to dress in my place, coach. He deserves it. Don't be ridiculous. You're an all-American and our captain act like it. I believe I am. Me too, coach. I want Rudy to dress in my place. For Rudy, coach. <laughs> Yeah, gotta love Rudy. Even if you're not a Notre Dame fan, still gotta love Rudy. Very inspirational stuff. Well, you had to love Notre Dame football last year if you were an Irish fan. Well, this is the first six games, won all of them. And defense only gave up 12 points per game in the first five. And then the Florida State game. The game where the Seminoles, number one, big winning streak, defending national champion in Notre Dame, despite being undefeated, wasn't given much of a shot. Not only did Notre Dame hang close with Florida State, but actually had a shot at winning, and for a few seconds looked like they did win in the final few seconds of that game with a touchdown pass, but it was negated by an offensive pass interference penalty, and Notre Dame lost a heartbreaker. They did beat Navy the following week, but you had a feeling the damage had been done, and at the same time, right before our very eyes, the Notre Dame defense, well, they were dropping like flies, literally, because of the fact that they couldn't keep healthy. They kept getting banged up, and that terrific point-per-game average that Notre Dame's D had for the first five games, it melted the last eight. They went from giving up 12 per game the first five to giving up about 35 the last eight. And the last eight games, they lost five of them, including an, a humiliating loss to USC. So, entering the 2015 season, even though the Irish did close that strong with the win against SEC Power LSU in the Music City Bowl, the two biggest issues for Notre Dame were, number one, the injuries. Sometimes you just can't prevent them. And in the case of Notre Dame, they just had hard luck in that department on defense. But number two, being able to control the ball. In other words, don't give it up so much. Turnovers. And in Notre Dame's defense entering this season, maybe part of the problem is someone that they won't have this year. Everett Golston, who was their quarterback in 2012, the year they went to their last national championship game. Now, of course, Golston was the quarterback throughout much of last season. As talented as he was, as athletic as he was, as many touchdown passes as he threw, he also had a turnover problem. He threw a lot of interceptions, made bad decisions, and that's why Malik Zaire got the start in the bowl game against LSU, and in that game, Notre Dame didn't commit a single turnover. They uh, did a much better job in that department, and maybe that's when Golston you know, listened to his inner self and thought, you know what, maybe I should go somewhere else, and he did. Now he's a Seminole playing for Jimbo Fisher's team. Zaire is an athletic quarterback, just like Golston. He's a left-hander, so receivers are definitely going to have to get acclimated to him. And again, in that bowl game against LSU, played very well. Zaire is now the leader of this team. And the big thing is, as long as he doesn't get on a turnover streak like we saw Golston did the latter part of last season, Notre Dame will be just fine. He's got Will Fuller to throw the ball to. Fuller, 1,000-guard-plus receiver from a year ago. And also, too, uh, Fuller had 15 TDs. Now, they have other experience at receiver, but to me, Fuller is the best of the bunch. We'll see if Chris Brown um, and C.J. Precise can add to that passing element by catching the ball. I don't think that, in my opinion, Brian Kelly did quite enough as far as the ground attack. Now, they got a good ground attack and probably didn't utilize it enough, and maybe that's because of the fact that Kelly is a pass-orientated type coach. We saw that when he was at Cincinnati. But he has a running game, and we'll see if he uses more of it this time. Tarion Folston, he's a weapon. 889 yards running last year, six TDs, and the former five-star recruit Greg Bryant there to assist in the backfield. The offensive line for Notre Dame, well, they have three back, but they lost three. They lose the uh, tight end, and we'll see if Durham Smythe can handle the position of tight end, but you also have to replace the right tackle and the left guard. But back at left tackle, my opinion, the best of the bunch in Ronnie Stanley. But don't forget about Nick Martin at center and at right guard Steve Elmer. Notre Dame, we'll see if the running attack can do a little bit more, but we'll see if they get the opportunity to do more in 2015. Now, defense, we've already documented how effective they were at the beginning when they were healthy. But if there is one silver lining in last year with all the injuries, it did give an opportunity for those backups to get quality playing time. And now you get the best of both worlds if you're Notre Dame entering this season. You return 10 starters and maybe 11 if you get picky because uh, Kavari Russell, that corner, he was a starter but didn't play all of last year because of academic issues. But you have him along with the other corner and Cole Luke. Max Redfield at a safety, along with Elijah Shoemate at the other safety. Again, they're very experienced there. 
But remember, Notre Dame will not only have those starters back, but also those guys who got some uh, playing time. A guy like uh, Niles Morgan at uh, linebacker. Remember, he played last season after the uh, Joe Schmidt injury. You know, Schmidt was the uh, defensive MVP for this team, but had a uh, major ankle issue, um, major ankle injury against Navy. That was game number eight last season. So that's when Morgan came in and played quite well. But, of course, the linebacker to watch out for, he's already on the uh, McNarick list as far as the nation's best defensive players. Um, we'll talk about some other guys who are as well, um, is Jalen Smith. Smith, 117 tackles, second-team All-American a year ago. Helps to have him back. The defensive line, really watch how these guys do because last season, um, they know they could have done better. Last season, um, they did give up their fair share of rushing yards. That's going to be the big thing. But as far as getting to the quarterback, Sheldon Day, it's about as good as it comes. You know, defensive tackle that could definitely get into the backfield, had several sacks a year ago. Day, along with Smith, along with Russell, all three on the early McNarick watch list as far as the nation's best defensive player. So watch how these guys play this season. The special teams will take a little bit of adjusting because Brenza is not back. Kyle Brenza, you know, who handled the punting and kicking duties, well, his time's finally done. So don't be surprised if a true freshman named Justin Yoon, and I hope I pronounced that right, Y-O-O-N, you don't run across those last names all the time, could very well be the place kicker. Entering 2015, you know that schedule is going to be loaded. For Notre Dame, there are plenty of landmines to watch out for. Texas Longhorns could be one of them, and that's the season opener, but you get them at the house that Rockney built. This could be a low-scoring game because Texas under Charlie Strong will have a pretty good defense. Notre Dame has a good defense, too. Second game is at Virginia for Coach London. You already know he's under a lot of pressure to win there at uh, Charlottesville. So that's a big game for Notre Dame on the road. Georgia Tech, one of the few teams you see anymore that run that triple option. That'll be a tough game for Notre Dame because of how well Georgia Tech not only runs, but also plays good run defense. So it'll be a challenge. You play UMass at home, and then you go to Clemson. That's a rotten break right there. Remember, uh, Notre Dame, even though they are an independent school, in football, they still play several ACC teams per season. And, of course, we mentioned how tough Georgia Tech will be. Playing at Clemson will not be a picnic at Death Valley. Play Navy, speaking of the run. And second half of the schedule doesn't look as treacherous, but there are two games to really watch out for. USC, game number seven, they're a contender with Cody Kessler back at quarterback, and they return a lot of talent too. And then all the way at the end of the year at Stanford, Cardinal always play Notre Dame tough. It doesn't matter what Stanford's like, they always give Notre Dame fits, and this time you got to play them at Palo Alto. That could have some college football playoff ramifications for both teams. Look, Notre Dame will be better. There's too much experience for them not to be. But it might be like that old saying from Bill Clinton in the 1992 um, presidential debates with George W. Bush or George H. W. Bush. While experience is a factor and while experience helps, experience isn't everything. For Notre Dame, they got enough players back who got that experience a year ago, both starters and backups. But they don't get much better as far as rush defense goes. And if that injury bug, which you can't always control, and usually you can't, if that resurfaces once more, uh, Notre Dame could be in some trouble. There's enough teams on their schedule to give them fits. But still, though, considering what they have back defensively and offensively, I think Notre Dame will be improved. How improved? I'm going to go 10 wins. 10 and 2. No way they're going to go undefeated. Competition's way too tough. And special teams, as far as the kicking, we'll see how that goes too. 10-2, and two, and at the end of the year, as far as my preseason show, meaning end of August, I will have one final show, my college football preview, in terms of my final four. The four teams I think they'll be in the playoff. And I'm not going to tell you right now if I think Notre Dame will make it. You'll have to find out at the end of August to see. But I will tell you one thing, the Irish will have my attention. That's my look at Notre Dame. So long.